Ling Tin, and guess what? What? DJ, we are ready to start our final quarterfinal match. I guess we're not quite ready because the players aren't there yet, but they will be very soon. And uh, we will get to see Tiz versus Falcane, and it should be uh, a really fun match. Uh, Falcane, one of my favorite players to watch uh, in this tournament right now. He's so expressive when he plays, and uh, he makes such good decisions, too. Usually you see an emotional uh, or a player that appears to be emotional like that um, let that affect their play. But it's like there's two separate things going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a, a very fun player to watch. Yeah. Um, he makes the broadcast more fun, right? He uh, does. Uh, he's very expressive. We saw him at Master Tour Soul as well, uh, an event that he managed to win last year. Right. Uh, and it was the same there. Um, he has had a couple brain farts uh, throughout the weekend. Uh, but It happens. Uh, happens again, to the best of us. Well, you're, you know, he had the the highlighted cards, apparently, uh, because of his colorblindness. He, he sure. It's hard for him to see. So he has to keep manual track uh, every single turn of if do the check himself, whether or not he has a dragon, whether or not, like, Zephyrus is active a lot of times. Or, yeah, uh, kicking it old like school. Uh, and here you can see some of his reactions over the course uh, of the weekend. I think uh, that was the uh, the nether, uh, the, the dragon that yep. uh, he played without the other one in his hand. Yep. <laughs> Shut your eyes and hope. <laughs> that happens. Oh, yeah. I just want to <laughs> screenshot that and put it as my computer wallpaper. There's, He's just like a nonstop tour of uh, possible emote opportunities, you know? You can make so many. You could. And I was really excited for this series, Doa. And now looking at the picks and bands, I'm a little disappointed. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Tiz has Combo Priest. Yeah, and it's that's been awesome. Performing pretty well, he was almost single-handedly like picking up the priest win rate over the course of uh, the event mm -hmm. um, in, in the sample size, but it was banned away. Uh, well, let's take a look. Uh, let's learn a little bit more about these guys, and then we can get uh, more into our, our woes, our sadness about <laughs> the uh, the bans for the deck list. Let's learn about uh, Falcane a little bit. Uh, like you mentioned, he did win Masters Tour Soul last year. He has three uh, Hearthstone Championship Tour playoff appearances. And uh, check it out, all the way back in 2017, so many, many years ago, able to place high in uh, Arma Cup number six. So certainly some results, but uh, recently really picking up steam. Yeah, I think uh, the recency is is what we need to focus on. And uh, that career resume, I'm sure, is going to get long very quickly. Yeah. As Falcane was one of the players that was promoted to Europe Grandmasters at the end of the Masters Tour season last year, along with uh, Countryman Zim. Uh, so uh, should be a fun player to watch as the year progressive progresses because we're going to be seeing a lot of him once Grandmaster starts. His opponent, Tiz, uh, top 24 in the 2019 APAC Winter Playoffs. So he got up there, I suppose, uh, two playoff appearances in his career. Top 100 at the Masters Tour Soul. So, you know, not quite the results that Falcane has seen uh, yet, but a chance today to silence whatever haters may be out there and punch his ticket to the semifinals uh, over a very strong player. Yeah, and the the thing I like about Tiz is he's he's uh, for the most part not conforming to what uh, a lot of other players have thought uh, would be the best decks coming into the event. Sure. Uh, the exception being Galakron Warlock, uh, he did bring that. Uh, but if you look at his other decks, Combo Priest, and it's it's not even like a Combo Priest that you'd expect. He plays Magic Carpet uh, with, oh, wow. uh, extra, huh. with extra one drops, um, and it's uh, he plays Highlander uh, Rogue. Interesting. So he has the Highlander Galakon Rogue instead of the traditional one, and he's also got the Holy Wrath Paladin. Huh. So it's a little bit of an offbeat lineup, and that just makes it more impressive that uh, he's made it to the top eight uh, with that type of lineup, and uh, we haven't got to watch him much throughout the throughout the weekend so i'm excited to see you know if his play can match his creativity with his deck lists yeah well that's like another strategy you can employ coming into a weekend like this is uh to bring decks that you yourself have practiced a ton yes. but other people may not be expecting you throw people off their game plan they aren't quite as sure in their reactions they second guess themselves so yeah you can kind of have a, a bit of a psychological advantage with a, a deck a set like uh, he brought yeah, there's this the, an argument as old as time uh, within Hearthstone of uh, play styles, right? Because mm -hmm. there's some players out there who think play styles uh, don't really exist, or at least they don't matter. There's always an optimal strategy and optimal plays. I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I, I tend to disagree with that as well. But then once you get into the realm of looking at players' play styles, there's some players that don't try to conform, they try and beat the meta. But there's other players that do try and conform and try and master what have been proven 
as the best decks. Yeah. Uh, so, and even within those, there's a ton of other ways that, that players like to play. Some players tend to be more aggressive. Some players tend to be more safe. Um, you can see that a lot of time in mulligan strategies or tech choices. Well, I um, think if, if you look, uh, as, as we check out Falcane's decks here, uh, as you look at like the near 30 years of competitive card game history that the world has, right? That's been an argument that goes way, way beyond Hearthstone, right? Where some players really are the best at finding that, you know, top deck, as, as everyone says, and then absolutely mastering it, where other players have always really excelled at forging their own path and uh, playing something that they've created better than anyone else. Yeah, we have one of the one of the most uh, famous card game players of all time in our very scene, and that's Brian Kibler. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he, you know, became known for having that specific style, the Dragon Master yep. uh, himself. Even within Hearthstone, he hasn't competed much. He's mostly on this side of the desk. Uh -huh. uh, but when he does or when he streams and plays on ladder and tries to climb, He's always trying to do it with something, you know, uh, of his own creation. Right. It's a little bit more value oriented with playing big stuff or doing fun things. So um, uh, I like to see that transfer over into the top level of competitive play. And I think that Tiz is as close as we can get uh, to that while still maintaining that competitive edge. So uh, Combo Priest banned away, but we will get to see Holy Wrath Paladin and like I mentioned, uh, the Highlander uh, Galakron Rogue. Right, and that just kind of adds some extra tools in there at the end, like Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, Your which is, as we've seen, mine. a card we see pretty much every game, no matter what deck it is. So why not Rogue as well? That's right, and first matchup is going to be the Rogue for Felcane, uh, who is just running uh, the uh, normal Galakron Rogue, a lot of two ofs, uh, making sure you can get those consistent invokes, get that Galakron online earlier. Uh, Dragon Maw Poacher is a tech card that, that he has in the list, expecting a lot of dragons uh, this weekend. Maybe that came out from some of his practice uh, leading up to the event. Yeah, I feel like we were starting to see less and less dragons on the ladder in general, but at this tournament where you kind of know you're going to be facing a lot of decks, a lot of dragons, and I think the Poacher is something you can include pretty safely. Although a lot of people are taking that card uh, out of their list lately. So yeah. Tiz. Do you just go for the uh, the snip snap on curve here, you think? Uh, I would like to see a life tap, but the reason why I don't like the snip snap too much is it gives uh, Tiz, or sorry, gives Falcane an easy seal fate target. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. he, he life tapped last turn, which means that he wouldn't be able to seal fate his face. And um, there's many times where, where rogues, uh, either they need to use the coin to combo, say, an evil miscreant, uh -huh. uh, or they want a target to seal fate. And playing yeah. something on three, especially like a snip snap, I uh, think is kind of playing into that. What this does uh, is that, ooh, it could be big Edwin swinging in. It's a medium Edwin, 4-4 four, well, four Edwin. he can coin shadow step. That's true. That would be a lot of resources to use on uh, one Edwin yeah. against uh, a Warlock. That'd be pretty risky. Yeah, that'd be very risky yeah. because Plague of Flames would just ruin your day. It certainly would. I, I like that Tiz had the ability to get rid of Big Edwin here. That's that's nice. Um, I was thinking maybe he was saying, well, if I just get the microbots and then I draw into um, rights, you know, I can at least have a couple two ones running into face next sure. turn, depending yeah. on what happens. So, you know, th there's some lines of play out of that. But I see what you're saying too, where you know maybe the life tap would have been a more of a longer game plan. But he looks like he may want to accelerate things, kind of knowing that he's playing against a Highlander version of this. Hmm. Yeah, Rogue can snowball games, uh, not as well as they, you know, once could. Yeah, uh, they tend to be a little bit slower in the early game, um, and the coin does have a lot of value as well. Uh, speaking of like the other last turn, even if Plague of Flames didn't exist, uh, the coin has sort of gone up in value because of, you know, High Spare and Togwaggle. How many evil swing, miscreant. evil miscreant? How many swing turns and power turns you just have in the deck? Yeah. Um, sometimes you need that coin to just squeeze out. Uh, uh, High Spirit Togwaggle or Galakrond or Kronks to turn early. Wow. Plague of Flames just to get rid of the uh, Shield of Galakron. Yeah. That's a very uh, that's a very aggressive line uh, to take. Well, he saw Edwin, um, and Rogue, as the game goes on, tends to load up the board with lots of lackeys sure. and small things. So that's one of the biggest minions you can find uh, that can be played that early outside of Edwin Van Cleef. Fair enough. He does have a crazy nether wing is, or two as well to deal with those, you know, big boards of smaller minions. Yep. So. Grand money. All right. Solid uh, reborn minion popping out. And he's going to go ahead and shadow step that. 
Yeah, save that for later for uh, possibly, uh, would you even consider a turn six Baron Togwaggle? Oh, absolutely. The earlier you can get it down, the better. Sure. Uh, Shadow Step on the Lackey is so <laughs> good so because like I said, getting down those power cards one turn earlier can be a world of difference. So getting those free spells yeah. uh, could be huge. It's just a matter of which Lackey he wanted to Shadow Step, right? Uh, the Ethereal Lackey has um, more attack and maybe more potential upside, but the Faceless Lackey uh, tends to be like slightly more consistent in some regards because you're just always getting uh, some stats on board. Right, exactly. He's going to go ahead and uh, drop that again. And uh, yeah, why not? 3-3, three, three. solid body. Very solid body for Kuka. Yeah. There's the fiendish rights. What's he gonna go for? Uh, okay, Kray's another one who's gonna be the play. He had a couple different options there. But at least this is gonna leave him with uh, the bigger minion on the board. And that was a second sort of life for Grand Mummy too. So. Oh, he's even got the Dragon Ball Poacher to trade over this. Wow. Seal Fate. Okay. Ooh. All right. Some exciting stuff there. Yeah, some interesting options. Um, hmm. A wealth of choices, actually, for uh, Phil Kane right now. And it's just kind of what sets you up best for that Galakrond and then what gives you the most resources to hold over for future turns, really. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to play any of this. Uh, the the yeah. problem is Dragon Ball Poacher, uh, if you... Yeah, I guess if you play Dragon Ball Poacher and trade it in, you're susceptible to the second Craze Netherwing. Um, and you know there's going to be more dragons coming out because there's Alexstrasza in the deck, there's Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, there's another Kra Craze Netherwing, so you will yep. get Dragon Ball Poacher value at some point. There's a reason why he becomes an 8-8. Eight -eight. Yes. Yeah. And it's to kill 8-8s. Eight -eight. It's to kill 8-8s. Eight -eight. <laughs> As a shiv, I suppose he can pair into the, uh, the attack. That draws a card, too, which is nice. And uh, drop a couple 4-4s four on the board, I suppose, too. Yeah. So a pretty powerful turn, all things considered. And uh, like we mentioned, gets to hold on to the Poacher. Uh, a lot of removal options with Flick uh, and Poacher plus Seal Fate plus Eviscerate combo. Yeah. And then a lot of times, Praise Galakron just basically ends up pay one mana, get a Lackey. Yeah. Um, or you, sometimes you get to push an extra damage here or there, but... Once in a while, but you don't need to. Like, you don't need to... You, it's probably a mistake to save that card until you absolutely need the damage. You know, that's like a secondary bonus, I feel like, with the card. Ooh, a bonus attack? A bonus damage. Oh, I love it. That's right, yeah. It's value. Everybody loves value in Hearthstone. Mm, no, I'll trade value for face <laughs> damage any, any day. With, I, you with, know, I prefer aggressive lines of play as well. Well, with Praise Galakon, you get both. You do. Ultra aggressive because you can put even more minions down. Yeah. Maybe you get the Goblin Lackey and you can add even more attack onto it. But now we're talking. <laughs> Double the value. Looks like it's going to be a snip snap turn. Yeah. The, the one thing that Falcon has to worry about here is his life total, but I think this is one of the reasons why he's stacking both of these uh, snip snaps onto one because with Zeliac's in hand, he can go for a big swing next turn. Uh, since this isn't really too threatening of a minion where Tiz is going to want to, uh, you know, uh -oh. like Plague of Flames hit. Yeah, uh, Nether Breath, uh, an option to take that Snip Snap down. Oh. Wow. Taps down to 19. So there are a couple breakpoints with the deck. Um, he's seen one of the Shadow Steps, Leroy Shadow Step. Uh, Leroy uh, plus a Dagger hit is one, so 13. So he's not in trouble yet, uh, especially with the Nether Breath in hand. And yeah, he's just going to go straight upstairs. Wow. To the face. Respect. Yep. Another nether breath drawn. Oh. Not bad. It's a solid hand that can handle a lot of things. Dark skies with a full hand. Feels good. Go ahead and gain a little bit more health, I suppose. Oof. Okay. So Zeliax will do a lot in uh, trying to get Felcane back at a safe life total. Um... I'm wondering what comes alongside it, because uh, the Devoted Maniac my, uh, seems a little slow, uh, but so does pretty much everything so here. Many you, you go for Eviscerate and use this Snip Snap to push face damage. Yeah, I think it's it's tough because you want to save that Draconic Lackey to enable you know like your Eviscerate or your Evil Miscreant or something like that, but maybe you just kind of want to see what spell you get to this turn. Yeah. Well... 
That's happening. Zillion. That's happening 100%. Yeah. It's just what what else does he fill the mana with? Right. I think if he picked up, let's say, a Kobold Lackey here, he could... Uh, or not a Kobold Lackey. Yeah, a Kobold Lackey, he could feel free to, like... Um, I don't know. I was thinking of Seal Fate. I was like, oh, it only deals three. <laughs> he could use Eviscerate and the Kobold Lackey to kill the Veiled Worshipper. Doesn't even... <laughs> that's right. If you played him in the wrong order, you Technically, you could. <laughs> you can. You're not wrong. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's a rough Dark Skies. That was nearly a complete waste of a Dark Skies. I'm going to be real honest with you. Yep. Did not do a lot of damage to the other side. It, it didn't bring this Zilliac Snip Snap down to any breakpoint, Crazy no. Netherwing or Nether Breath. And now you just like shrug and you're like, well, I guess I can Nether Breath, yeah. Nether Breath crazed, uh, you know, to oh, maybe like the leave the yeah. tokens out, but it's just so bad. Or Godfrey, like it, it didn't yeah. even set up a decent Godfrey play. And now he's staring at eight damage on the board, nine with the dagger. And he has to use the Nether Breath just to chip away and not have to worry about dying to some of the crazy stuff uh, that Felke can do because he has been holding on to one zero cost card. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure Tiz is afraid of what that could be. Exactly. Hmm. What do you go with? Uh, probably just the biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, you've got enough mana to play it. Yeah, he could go with like evasive Fey Wing to you know fill his mana with other stuff. Um, yeah, maybe like a devoted maniac to trade mm -hmm. in or try and find uh, have a bunch of additional mana to try and find something with ethereal like uh, that can that can clear the board. Bright Wing for the second Leroy. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you you found the plan. line, Doa. Yep. <laughs> I I think you're right though. Evasive uh, Dracon is the safest play. You can still throw it down. A little bit tougher for Warlock to remove, but, you know, Warlock, if they have Rain of Fire, they can remove anything they want. Ooh, although he has seen one used. Dragon Ball Scorch is actually uh, uh, quite a good pickup, considering um, just how Warlock likes to play, the yeah. invocability in general. But Felkane's starting to get close. A Leroy pickup is 10 damage from hand, and this board is uh, quite threatening. Zilliax, just in the nick of time to provide maybe a little bit more healing for Tiz. Now, is his Galakron fully invoked right now? I think it may be trying to judge by the hero so portrait there. It is. I think it is. Yeah. I believe it is. Seems that way. You know, I'd be worried if I was uh, Gul'dan that I would be uh, scorching my beard with that magic that you see right there. He's holding it right under his beard. <laughs> I've always been worried, but it looks like he's okay. He's, he's a big green dragon now, so don't worry about it. And there's a a little bit more healing. Seize control of the board. That's a lot of damage to have to take, though, and he's not taking that much else off the board. Six, seven damage on board with double eviscerate. Flick plus double eviscerate is enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seven damage on board plus eight from hand. That's plenty yep. of damage for Felkin. He sees it. Flick comes in, and uh, like you mentioned, with the eviscerate combos and with the damage from the microbots, uh, that's going to be game number one going the way of Falcon. Coming into this quarterfinals, eight and one from the Swiss rounds, and starting off his quarterfinal match with a, a game up. Yeah, a couple of plays that you know I'd like to you know go back and take a look at later from Tiz's side. The Dark Skies being the primary one. Yeah. Um, just because his Veiled Worshipper had less health total, it's just as likely that it hits that than the uh, Snip Snap. Granted, he did get quite unlucky with it. Uh, you know, it was on average uh, at least going to deal enough damage to where Nether Breath uh, could take it out. Right, right. Um, but you have to account for those things, you know? And he had a lot of resources in hand. There was a, there was ways for him to, like, activate a good Lord Godfrey with Nether Breath mm -hmm. uh, by itself. He could clear the board and, you know, left a 4-4 remaining. Um, so those are the types of things uh, that you, you know, have to think about. And uh, he ripped that Dark Skies quick. I think this is where you have to kind of stress, too, that this is like the third day in a row that these guys have had to be playing Hearthstone yep. absolutely top level in the world. And it takes a mental toll. You know, it's, it's very, very difficult to maintain that level of concentration for so long. 
especially since it's so far away from home for both these players. Tiz sure, uh, yeah. all the way from Taiwan and Felkane all the way from France. So um, uh, maybe jet lag settling in a little bit. Tiz, yeah. yeah. It looks a little bit sleepy. Yeah, A little bit sleepy. You know, yep. we can say that, but some players just like to be zen when they're playing. They just like to kind of go up on stage, chill, play some Hearthstone games like they're playing at home. Yep. Um, Are you zen when you play Hearthstone? Are you a chill guy? Uh, I'm almost always a chill guy. You I'm seem like a pretty chill guy. You know, I, I've known you for a number of years. You've always been fairly chill. I'm just pretty zen yeah. all the time. Yeah. Me, me too. Except for certain situations on the ladder. Once in a while. You know. One of those moments. If I have to go to Battlegrounds, that makes me feel better. Until Soothe one of those your moments. soul. <laughs> <laughs> Until one of those moments. And then like you got to go back to Constructed. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. See, that's the greatest thing about Battlegrounds is you have a, you have an escape from the ladder, and then the ladder gives you an escape from Battlegrounds. So <laughs> yeah. Just never leave the client. <laughs> that's where I've been for a long time. So now we do see the uh, Warlock coming in from uh, Falcane, and it's going to be the Holy Wrath Paladin, actually, from uh, Tiz this time around. So switching things up, saying, you know what? I'll bring the Warlock in later. I got to get a win with, win with this Paladin anyway. I believe it's the last Holy Wrath Paladin remaining in the field. I think um, you're right. It, it, it has seen so some good. struggles. I, I loved it at the beginning and day one when we started to see it a bit. Uh -huh. uh, but you could tell like its win rate started to fall off as we started to get you know higher and higher up in the, uh, in the standings once the field was cut down. Uh, it did start to struggle a little bit more, but uh, Tiz has managed to reach top eight with it. It's... It's got a lot of strong removal options, um, but I still, and I, I like watching it, but I still feel like it's one of those decks where it's like somebody went, wouldn't it be sick if you could like holy wrath people with Sathrobar and everyone's like, LOL, and they made a deck and like, oh, I, you, you know, sometimes you make a silly deck and take on the ladder and you get a couple wins and you're like, oh, maybe this is actually pretty good. Yeah. And this is like that to the nth degree. This is where it's gotten all the way to this far. And, Has you know, science gone too far, Doa? It's gone way too far. The south of our thing, you know, it's it's out of control now. Look, it's already to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Somebody's got to stop this Holy Wrath Paladin shenanigans <laughs> thing. Philkin's going to do his best. Think. Well, it did wreak havoc in uh, in Grandmasters for, for some time, and <laughs> I feel like uh, Holy Wrath Paladin is one of those decks where it's vastly different uh, when it's played in... Um, you know, fully capable hands, sure. As opposed to moderately capable hands, I think the difference between a good and a great Holy Wrath Paladin player is the difference between going seven-two <laughs> in a tournament where you brought it to bombing out at three-four or what have you, yeah. to reachieving rank ten on the ladder. Yes. I, I would not take this on the ladder if I were. Yeah. Unless you're really confident in it. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you practice, by all means. I mean, the ladder is a good place to practice, too. Yeah, so the goal here for, for Tiz is to uh, try and find ways to chip away damage when he uh, gets close uh, to his combo. Because that can be the issue. Because you're not really dealing much damage over the game. You're, you're rarely grabbing the board mm -hmm. um, up until, you know, once uh, Sathabar comes out with Shrivala and you can play, like, three in the same turn. So it's about kind of chipping away, uh, maybe forcing the Warlock on the back foot. Because later on in the game, Warlock's going to stay around 30, right? They're, yeah, for sure. They're going to have Nether Breath. They have Sacrificial yes, Pact. Yes, um, they have uh, uh, Galakron, the armor, just from playing Galakron. So you've got a lot of ways to go smoothly into that late game, you know? And you know the Paladin's going to go there. Yeah. So there's no real pressure to rush anything as the Warlock players. It's kind of what you're saying, it seems like. And yeah, well, they rush everything because they draw a lot of cards. Holy Wrath Paladin uh, was uh, the best draw engine in the game for, for some time with Christology and just how many draw options they have. But you can tell just by the card count right now that Felcane is challenging that because of Veiled Worshiper and Life Tap. Yeah. Um, Warlock Hero Power exists, so. Yes, it does. It's going to be it's gonna be easy for uh, Warlock to retake that throne, I think, whenever they want to. Yeah. Uh, but the Bad Luck Albatross could make things uh, a lot more difficult for Tiz because that's just a couple extra cards that he has to draw before he can guarantee this combo. Right. Oof. Oh, that is unfortunate. Zephyrus comes out with the first Holy Wrath. Ouch. Yep. That is, that is an oopsie. Continuing to draw cards, keep himself uh, fairly healthy. There's the Sathravar, so that's going to be something that'll be useful later on in the game. Yep. 
Warlock, uh, since they don't have to use Plague of Flames uh, nearly at all in this matchup, have a relatively easy time dealing with uh, that push uh, from the Holy Wrath Paladin, at least the the uh, board push. Yeah. Uh, the actual Sathabar turn. Mm. Um, but like I said, it gets tricky once you get to the late game trying to play around the potential damage sources. Yeah. Uh, because there is damage breakpoints, especially when you factor in Zephyrus, uh, because you do have uh, Shervala, uh, Baleful Banker, Holy Wrath, and then a Zephyrus plus uh, like Soul Fire. Uh, sure. Or Lightning Bolt, Fireball or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, in the same turn, uh, you're limited to one, so like the Soul Fire, the Lightning Bolt. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, but there's also, you have to factor in, well, what if they do the combo? I don't have healing. I'm not going to kill them. Then they play Zephyrus next turn and get like that Fireball, Power Blast, they pocket that, or Tyrion for 15 recurring damage uh, if you run out of stuff. So there's a lot of options in the late game, and that's where it starts to become that real puzzle. Like right now, Felkane's just like, well, how do I get to Galakron the fastest while uh, making sure that I don't burn cards? Draw as much as possible while not burning any. Uh, but as we get later, it's going to start to get a little bit more complicated once that deck thins out. Well, that's the situation that Felkane's in right now, where he's like, all right, what do I what do I ditch from my hand here just to make more room? Hmm. Hmm, head scratch. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough because you really hope that you would have uh, so many, you know, something like a, the Dragon Blight Cultist or the uh, you know rights or something like that. Life so you go ahead and drop the Dragon Queen Alexstrasza. Oh, an eight eight. Yeah, just gets an eight eight on the board. Cool. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> gets it out of the hand at least. Yeah, I, I like the uh, the non green uh, from, from Belkin here. Yeah. All right. Sathvar comes in to toss a bunch of cats all around the game and deck. How dare you? Battlefield. It's a tiger. Hey, uh, not a mere cat. Oh, you're right. It's a tiger. It's a big cat. Tigers are big cats. Technically, yes. <laughs> they are. But it's a holy tiger. Is it? Mm. Yeah, I guess it kind of is, isn't it? It uses the light. Well and it'll always land on its feet. So when Sathavar tosses it around, it'll be fun. <laughs> I'm not a cat person. Though. We talked about this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about it again for the next 15 minutes if you want. Oh, we, we could. <laughs> Nothing else is really going on, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Another Dark Skies. Hey, this helps set out the hand. Sure. There, there is that. And Build Worshipper fills it right back up again. But again, he's looking for some more invokes, and he finds one. Yeah. He, he does have pretty much everything he needs, so he's going to burn a card going in the next turn, but sure. um, not the biggest deal. He has Zephyrus. He has both Nether Breaths. He has Galakron. He has Kronks. Um, maybe a Sacrificial Pack to try and pull him out of range of something. Uh, I know he's used one earlier on in the game, um, but other than that, think. there's not much. He also draws into another Bad Luck Albatross, so again, <laughs> that's just more cards that Tiz is going to have to draw yeah. uh, before he can activate that combo. I think if we could kind of nominate like a class of MVP cards for this tournament, I think Bad Luck Albatross uh, should actually be in there because of the amount of, uh, because of how it slows down Highlander decks, but also yeah. the damage it does to this Palm deck. Yeah, any combo deck or Highlander deck, it, it, it just makes life miserable at times. Very true. I think we could nominate uh, bombs in that category too. Just bombs. Yeah. Bombs from warrior things. Yeah, brimful. I was very surprised when I was looking at the deck list for the top eight. It's like, okay, well, that guy has bomb warrior. Ooh, Zilliax. Oh, burning Zilliax, that, that hurts. That does yeah. not feel good. Yeah, Zilliax is rough. Oftentimes later on in the game though, uh, the uh, Warlock uh, will try not to give you anything to attack into. Um, but sometimes that can be quite difficult because eventually you need to kill the Paladin. They have a lot of damage. It's hard to just kind of sit back and and let them do whatever they want to because that's when Tyrion comes out from Zephyrus and you get sad. Right. <laughs> Tyrion makes you sad. And you're like, Tyrion, why are you attacking me? We're Paladin friends. The lore doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. Ghoul Dan summoning Tyrion to fight Uther. Awkward. Super awkward. It's going to make the next uh, Paladin Christmas party very, very <laughs> uncomfortable. Especially because Uther's been dead for like, I don't know how long. Like, why are you here? Uh, no. Warcraft was just reforged. He's oh, alive sure. again. Right. But World of Warcraft Classic uh, came out earlier. 
So I guess he was re-dead and then... Don't worry, because what? eventually, if, if Classic moves on to Burning Legion at some point, then he can die again. <laughs> okay. So then uh, we'll be good. All right, second Holy Wrath picked up. That one's uh, got to be saved. But this uh, this board does allow Tiz to chip off this armor, uh, which is not something you're always afforded the luxury of being able to do without a swing from uh, True Silver. Um, he doesn't have... Uh, he has a quality plus Wild Pyromancer uh, that would leave the Crystal Smith Kangor still up. Yep. Now, he did use a Shrink Ray earlier in the game. Yes. But this is a play now. Reporting for duty. All right. He reports for duty, and then he sees Galakrond. He's like, I did not sign up for this. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't go with just uh, spinning his man last turn. He had Flash Flood available. Hmm. Mm, maybe he doesn't want to waste the healing, because there's the Claw equipped, and he still has Crystal Smith Kangor. So... Well, the, I suppose the other factor, too, is that, like, Maybe. as you get closer and closer to fatigue, you want to make sure you have more healing options. Uh, or Alex Straza. I think Alex Straza might be one of the main reasons. He plays Alex Straza, you can flash a light back out of range of, yeah, of certain true. combos. Uh, because Felkane is just kind of holding on to burst damage. He's going for the Alex Straza kill, mm. uh, which, uh, uh, from hand, with the current state of, of affairs, uh, it's Kronk plus Nether Breath plus Nether Breath. Um, which is 18 with the claw attack. If everything lives, he's got it. Uh, yeah, if everything lives, he's got it. Yeah, I imagine uh, if Tiz is not going to remove this board, we're going to see a timeout come here. But there's still six cards remaining, and the timeout timing is uh, incredibly crucial. You want to try and use it to either, I one, wonder. block damage on turns where you draw cards earlier on in the game, or two, ways to set up uh, guaranteed... Uh, lethal opportunities right. once you're out of cards or nearly out of cards. Um, and this is kind of one of those awkward spots where if you use a timeout now, you still have six, five cards to draw through. And Let me you're definitely think. concerned, though, because you know they're down to, like, six cards in their deck, right? And you know Alex Straza is probably in there. Yeah. Though if he Alex Straza's this next turn, uh, he wouldn't be dead. No. Reporting for duty. Not yet. Just going to make the Silver Hand recruit. Hmm. Bold. Very bold. Looking at it, though, there's not, there's not much else he could have done outside of timeout. And I do think it's a little bit early for timeout usage. And he's kind of in this position where he's got to take the risk, or maybe not even a risk, but knowing that he's going to take this amount of damage. And, yep. I like the Plague of Flames because this does not allow Tiz to heal off the Shrivala, and he has Kronks plus the Claw uh, to kind of get back into it yeah. uh, and deal that those last couple points of damage. That's really smart. So this forces a timeout usage. Yep. The Crystology just for a little bit more drawing then. Yeah, I really do like getting rid of all the um, the minions and uh, taking away the life steal. Oh no, and there's both albatrosses. I think actually those are the only. Uh, uh, one attack minions left in the deck. Yeah, I suppose it probably that's probably true, isn't it? Yeah. Or very close to it. He might have even had one more albatross from the previous bad luck albatross. Could be. Let me think. And maybe even acolyte of pain if he runs it, uh, which is uh, the case. So yeah, he does have an acolyte as well. Okay. And if you play Shrivala and it gets Plague of Wrath or Plague of Flames again, then things get a little tough. So he's going to load up his board with the Albatross to try and force Felkane to uh, play minions in order to make that happen. Yeah. And he doesn't have a Dragon to activate Nether Breath, so there's just two damage at the moment. Let's see what he draws. But a maniac. Yep, so probably just another Plague of Flames here and then a pass. Should be. Zephyr still not active. Yeah, I think. Uh, I feel like it's. Is it both Fiendish Rites? Did he play any of those this game? Uh, it might be both. Uh, I think he only plays one copy of Fiendish Rites, actually, because mm, okay. of the bad luck Albatross. Yeah, you could be right. I'm trying to remember what he hasn't played uh, any of yet this game. 
Meanwhile, over to Tiz's turn. Craze Netherwing. Picks up a shrink ray. Uh, could Let be. I think he is think. one. All if I remember right. We'll see in the next few turns. Yeah. But kind of a crazy situation. You have three cards remaining in your deck, and two of them are the same card. Yeah. Unless you're like me playing in Big and Druid on Ladder, and then that happens all the time. <laughs> then Big and I wonder. Okay, so we're starting to approach the territory. Uh, yep, of Tiz going for the Holy Wrath. Now. Yep, might just decide to uh, just go for it. Wait. No. Oh. I thought he was going to pull the trigger now, but he does have one more. Uh, the Sathavard, uh the the he's throw got two into in his deck. deck right now. Yeah. So he's still got some time. He's just trying to find some way to heal. And with both um, the Plague of Flames gone, I guess he's in a position where he wants to force Phil uh, Cave to have to twisting that of this board. Ooh, the Pyroblast. Wait. Mind control? Well, wait, it didn't... There's no Twisting Nether. Oh, that's strange. Maybe it just doesn't s think there's enough minions on the board? Falcane's uh, just as confused as I am. I'm shocked, yeah. I've, n I've never seen that. Wow. Mind control? He has eight mana. Zephyrus, are you okay? Is Zephyrus okay, guys? We've been wondering off and on. <laughs> We'll find, we'll find out on because soon enough. now he has to use the Nether Breath, and he gives Tiz the healing from the Shervala that he's been des. He has to go for Kronks. That is so awkward. And that gives up all of his burst damage. Oh, Falcon just crushed by that. Wait, I think even Tiz is confused that there's no Twisting Nether. Zephyrus giveth, and Zephyrus taketh away. <laughs> Out of wishes. Falcane just not happy at all about that one. Tiz just seems kind of stunned. I'm stunned. Is Tiz afraid to play his own Zephyrus now? <laughs> because he's not going to get what he wants? <laughs> no, <don't know. laughs> Like, is, is, is Zephyrus just it's, taking the day off or something? He's like, ah. Opposite day in Wishland. Uh, choose from one of these three options. That's, you know, that's why the theme is Zephyrus. Is Zephyrus okay? <laughs> oh, man. <gasps> what? Does he get it? No. Oh, no, the Baleful Fire! What okay. just happened in this game? So that was the weirdest <laughs> end of game I've ever seen. <laughs> Falcane's head, I think, nearly exploded at the end of that one. He, he looks he looks angry that that's how the game ended. So I think we're all just kind of confused right now. I didn't even have time to, like, talk through Tiz's options that turn, which he really didn't have much, uh, to be honest. Um, yeah. The couple things I was looking at was Zephyrus into um, uh, Lay on Hands, and then sure. you could play Shervala to uh, kill the Kronk and then win in Fatigue uh, because he's out of removal. I guess so. Or take a 1 and 4 to win right then. And he, I think he realized that I'm not going to win in Fatigue because he makes two 1-1s one every turn. Eventually that's going to get out of control. And so he decided to take the 25% outer to win. Um, that might even have, even have been... Uh, 50% if there was another Shavala left. I don't know. I was just so stunned, <laughs> as Phil Kane was, that there was no Twisting Nether <laughs> in that Zephyrus. It was a, a little bit shocking. A mind control. A mi two With ten eight mana, mana remaining. Two 10 mana spells. And a Pyroblast. Yeah. Is Zephyrus is like, well, he's at two. <laughs> so here's a Pyroblast. Uh, yeah, and, and two spells you can't cast. Oh, my goodness. Okay, still shaking his head kind of. Uh, baffled that he came away with the uh, the win in that one. Yeah, I think that almost every single player in this field would have ripped his efforts there and expected Twisting Nether. Um, Probably. So That's not the face of someone you, you uh, think of as being 2-0 up in this series. Yeah, that's... <laughs> It's like Zephyr. That is the face of a man who is betrayed by his favorite team. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, that's the most disgruntled I've ever <laughs> seen, uh, Falcon. The face of betrayal right there. Wow. Well, as we uh, get over this emotional moment, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, game number three between Tiz and Falcon, we'll see if uh, Tiz can pick up a win and stay alive. Hearthstone Masters Tour Arlington is brought to you by T Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network. T-Mobile.
mobile 5G is here, and it's nationwide. While some 5G signals go only blocks, T-Mobile 5G goes miles beyond the big cities, to the small towns, to the people. Millions of Americans can have access to 5G on T-Mobile. This is just the beginning. T-Mobile, the first and only nationwide 5G network. Welcome back to Hearthstone Masters to Arlington. Let's break down the Zephyrus moment again. Uh, so you can see the state of the board, the state of the health, and no twisting nether, which is what Falcane uh, may really have been expecting there. Huh? Yeah, uh, twisting nether, shadow or death, BGH, anything. And then I think he was so tilted by the fact that Zephyrus did not offer him um, the uh, removal for Shaval that he messed up the order of operations here. What he yep. could have done is faceless first, um, and then deal the damage to the Shrivala with Never Bre Nether Breath to take off the Divine Shield, gaining the health himself, right. uh, while um, uh, denying the health uh, from Tiz. Um, so what that did effectively was give Tiz uh, the out. I guess he would have had enough damage on board, but just order of operations, Falcane very upset at himself. Yeah. And we didn't even get to kind of talk about Tiz's options as well. I mentioned uh, Zephyrus into Lay on Hands. Um, he has a uh, a three and four chance to draw Shervala. With Kronk's gone, with Plague of Flames gone, mm. um, it's likely that he sticks that board. 
and uh, can maybe win in fatigue. Sure. So Falcane had another crazed nether wing, uh, which could have allowed him with the second nether breath uh, to clear the board that he had made. So it was a very hmm. quickly played, very complicated end of game that ended up in Tiz trying to take a one and four, missing, and Falcane winning despite the tilting moment of getting something from Zephyrus that you didn't expect right. and then messing up uh, the uh, the order uh, once everything was said and done. So <laughs> That was uh, that was uh, definitely one of the most interesting ends to a game we've seen uh, in the tournament so far. But if you're Falcane, you need to put it behind you and you need to say, you know what? Yeah, sure. I messed up the ordering. It was a weird moment, but I am up 2-0 in this series. Got a chance to win it, get the 3-0, go to the semis right here. And Tiz on the other side has to find a way to bring it back. And the plan is going to be Tiz sticking with his Paladin and Falcane, we'll just looking for that honor. final win on his mage. Well, I mean, Falcane, I think, just needs to uh, shake off whatever emotions he was feeling at the end of that one. Yep. Um, and get a little faith back in Zephyrus, because it may come in handy <laughs> that yeah. the rest of the series uh, playing the mage deck. So mage versus Holy Wrath Paladin. Well, Tiz is putting his faith in the light as uh, this Paladin has got to get a win at some point. So why not here? Why not now? Get the card draw going with the Novice Engineer. We'll be immediately turned to Cinders. No, no Christology again in the early game uh, for Tiz, uh, which is kind of rough because that's uh, one of the bigger engines because it allows you to draw into Novice Engineer, draw exactly. into Accolade of Pain. So it's draw that compounds on itself to give you more draw. Arcane Amplifier, one of the new cards that came out in the adventure last week. Uh, it's going to get Hammer of Wrath here for a little bit of damage, but it will continue to buff that hero power for Falcane. Yeah, so Holy Wrath Paladin originally appeared in uh, kind of, you know, early to mid-2019 as a counter to Cyclomage, uh, which was the deck that was wreaking havoc all over competitive play uh, around that time. Uh, everybody was bringing Cyclomage, and Holy Wrath Paladin had a fantastic matchup against it uh, because of their limited waves of threats hmm. and the plethora of removal. Uh, but Highlander Mage is a lot different because they rarely run out of threats, uh, and uh, you, you in order to make the Holy Wrath Paladin more lean with draw and with consistency like the Sathervar, uh, you, you cut some removal, right. uh, like uh, maybe run one equality, for instance, along with the Shrink Ray. So uh, it's a little bit different uh, than it was, a little bit of a different dynamic. Uh, but there's not many decks that can just straight up outvalue an entire deck of, of Highlander Mage. Maybe Quest Resurrect Priest is one of them, but uh, outside of that, it, it can be tough. True enough. So Falcane just uh, taking some time to establish uh, an early board, get some early damage done. Brings the opponent down. Uh, it'll be tough to do that. That's the second flash of light now for uh, Tiz. Draws a second bill from Banker. And two damage done by count uh, Consecrate. So really kind of a lot of, a lot of twos. Then. Yeah, and I think what Tiz is trying to do here is just spend his mana as efficiently as possible. Because it does a few things. It gets you, uh, he's drawing cards, spending his mana. That makes uh, the Shrivala cheaper. Uh, Fury and uh, Divine Shield here for uh, time at Tiamat. Uh-oh. Well, this is a clear, but it's a lot of resources having to be used for a clear. It is. Has to bring in the Alvin Archer in the, in the end to finish him off. Yeah, and starting to run low on draw again. That seems to be a trend for Tiz in these past couple games. Or as I like to call the Elven Archer, uh, a worse Cobalt Lackey. <laughs> yes. That's mean. Outclassed. That's mean, though. It is. It's, it's mean, but it's accurate. There's Zephyrus. The Betrayer. I like the Zilliax there because with Wild Pyromancer seen and a Consecration already seen, it's very difficult for Tiz to remove that. He can uh, bank on the health and uh, really just make these board states as awkward as possible uh, for Tiz to kind of uh, chew through. Yep, it's looking good for him right now. Yeah, super hard board to, uh, to get through as the Holy Wrath Paladin right Ooh. now. That's like the worst draw on the deck. Yeah, timeout. The second timeout. You don't want to see in your hand this early, it seems like. Yeah, no Prismatic Lens, no Christology, no Acolyte, no Novice. It's like the bottom portion of his deck is Shervala and Card Draw. I 
Might lead to some uh, pretty decent uh, shrink, uh, not shrink rays, uh, prismatic lenses, though. It could, but with Shrivala left in the deck still, um, prismatic lens can punish you in some ways. That's very true, too. If it swaps with a Holy Wrath, it shuts off one of your Holy Wraths completely. Whatever spell it swaps with, it shuts off completely. But yeah. Luna's Pocket Galaxy picked up Fire Two Witch Doctor, which will be free with the Dragon Caster, so. Well, that's the dream right there. Should have another one in his deck, but hey, you take the free one if you've got an opportunity like that. He can make his minions cost one again. <laughs> That's right, they're really one now. <laughs> Back up to 30 health for uh, Falcane. There's Sathravar. Uh, this is, hmm. you can, you're starting to see uh, kind of some of the weaknesses of Holy Wrath Paladin, maybe why we didn't see it that much. It's that they can beat themselves. Yeah. Uh, the deck is entirely reliant on drawing to the bottom. And uh, if for some reason they can't do that because their hand is stuck full of combo pieces or they don't find removal on time, they have no other secondary win condition. So it's... Well, you think about uh, this deck against aggro decks, right? And Tiz would be dead like two times over by now, you know, yeah. going into turn number or mana number 10. Yeah. Tolkien, very worried about that cartoon defender. Judging by the look on his face when it got hit. Oof. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. All right. It's pretty strong. Grabs a frost bolt for some more damage to face. Yep. And Arcane Keysmith is just going to make things awkward uh, for Tiz. Um, mm. Yeah, Counterspell is really the only one that makes much sense there. Vaporize. Yep. He's probably not attacking the face with any minions anytime soon. I don't think that's going to happen for the rest of the game. Yeah. There's a Holy Wrath. Oh, jeez. Well, oh, that's his only way to draw cards, and this is going to get counterspelled, so the board is still going to be there. Uh, how close is Tiz to death right now? 21 health, got 8, 10, 16 damage on the board. Yeah. Already. And he's got to be worried about that. the potential for the Malagos' Fireball, which is 8. Right. Uh, so he would be dead to that. Yeah. Or, you know, Caligos plus something, right? Caligos plus just a uh, regular Fireball would have yeah. been enough. Or Pyroblast. Um, or, or, or Zephyrus, you know? So there's so many things he's dead to. Having to use Let both timeouts think. when you have 11 cards left in your deck is, is nearly a death sentence. Yeah. Especially when there's a big board on the other side. And this is so disappointing for Tiz, too, because this isn't just a game. This is his tournament life right now that we're yep. talking about. If he loses this, it's just a 3-0 for Falcane. All right, there's the Bone Wraith. So it's just going to be just going to be even more meat on the board, potentially. I, Falcane wants this. Do you go with that, or do you go, do you go with the Dragon? I, I think you just go with the Bone Wraith. Why not? Yeah. I don't think he knows what he wants from Calicos yet. Um, the only issue is that he fills up his board for that very card, Shrink Ray. Yep. Can't play Zephyrus, can't play Caligos. He could ping off one of his minions and then play something. That's true. That would shut off Caligos. It would be lethal with, with uh, Bloodlust. Um, if you can get it. <laughs> if you can get it from Zephyrus, yep. yes. Okay, he could Frostbolt it to play the Caligos. I suppose that is an option as well. That is a zero mana to enable it. Ooh, not really the set of spells he was looking for, but yeah. yeah. Since he cast the Frostbolt, that was the first spell he cast this turn, so whatever he chose, uh, it's not going to be free, but the Skyloghost doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Pyromancer. I... Well, that would clear everything but Caligos and the Bone Wraith. Yes, but he would have to use Holy Wrath. Yes, you are right. That's and I think he's, right oh. now, I think he's pretty happy with leaving 1-1s one -ones on board just because he knows he's not dead because there's nothing that he can play. Right. Unless he had discovered a Pyroblast. Can't play Zephyrus to look for something, so I think, at least for now, he's okay. Um, but Falcane going to look for potential lethal here with Blast Weave. Uh... Picks up another Blast Wave, Flame yeah. Ward, and uh, Elemental Evocation. Huh. But the secret uh, will make uh, Tiz have to think about uh, what his 
uh, plays are. Right, because if it's another, uh, if he thinks it's another counter spell, then yeah. uh, suddenly that Holy Wrath just doesn't get played. Oh, well, no what. that's just game. Oh, <laughs> oh never mind. That's, that's, uh, that's zero mana Zephyrth. Yeah, okay. There's a fireball, and that means it's going to be a 3-0 victory for Falcane versus Tiz here in our final yeah. quarterfinal matchup. Players shake hands, and wow, that was uh, that was a short series, but that was a memorable one. It was a memorable <laughs> one. It was very weird, very weird. It was. You know, you expect Holy Wrath Paladin, uh, at least in that last game, uh, because of its options for removal, to put up a good fight. You expect that one to be kind of long and grueling at times. You'd think so, yeah. Uh, but no, just no card draw picked up for Tiz whatsoever. Yeah, and, sometimes uh, you just get run over like that. Yeah, and Felkane, I love his, uh, his plays there towards the end, just trying to maximize his potential for ending the game as early as possible. Uh, he doesn't want to let that uh, game uh, slip away from him, especially with a huge lead and knowing that Tiz's hand uh, was so poor with, you know, with the plays that he was forced to make. So yep. uh, that does solidify our top four and three out of our four players in the top four are French. Yeah, powerful uh, weekend for uh, the French Hearthstone community for sure. We'll see if one of them can come out on top. They have a three out of four chance to do it, I suppose. They do. Let's take a look at that bracket just to kind of review where we're at right now. As you can see, Alan, Vizes, Arock, and Falkine are our semifinalists. This is a this is a pretty good semifinal. So we have a good mix of players that have shown uh, that they are fantastic Hearthstone players. Yeah. Uh, with uh, um, with all four of them, but then we have Felkane Allen. Felkane probably the most successful player uh, historically uh, out of these four. But Allen has to be in that conversation. He's been around for a long time. I remember seeing him at DreamHacks many years ago when he was just a young lad, uh, uh, like a young teenager, just a, just a waif. At that yeah. Point. Uh, but now he's uh, booked himself into the, that semifinals, and he's going to have a tough opponent in Blyze, but uh, this should be an exciting end to the day. Yeah, it should be great. It. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, guys, and when we come back, we're going to get the semifinals started here at Hearthstone Masters Tour Arlington. It's going to be awesome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hearthstone Masters Tour Arlington is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network.